I was working at the time in 1981 for Good Morning America on ABC. I was a correspondent, and my principal job was to go out and find stories that were about people who were beating the odds. And I got assigned to do a profile on a bunch of incredible children that were coming to Colorado from MD Anderson Cancer Center. They were called the Sunshine Children, and MD Anderson was bringing them to Winter Park with the goal of basically letting these kids have fun. Thinking back, it was really one of those moments in life that was really a pinnacle of teaching, and to be exposed to these children who were children. They were joyous, they were energized. Some of them had, some of them were having a healthier week than others. Um, but to see the kids without limbs, having just had surgery, in recovery at some point, out there so happy to be in the snow, so happy to have that exhilarating experience of coming down a mountain. Because of the cancer, a lot of these kids were <laughs> high-risk daredevils. Do you remember the kid Johnny? I remember Johnny. Johnny, this oh boy gosh. didn't care how steep it was. He didn't care <clears throat> how many bumps there were. Yeah. He, I remember him saying to me, you know, Mr. Sullivan, when you got cancer, I don't think you have to worry much about turning. Let's just go straight down. <laughs> and, and he did. I'll tell you who was the hit of the whole deal, though, and it was Dinah. Yeah, Dinah was, right. uh, remember, that's Dinah right. was my first guide dog. Yeah. She was a golden retriever. She was the icebreaker. Oh, man. These kids would just, we let Dinah, we actually let Dinah live with them. Yeah, she spent the night. She spent the nights. And cuddled they, up. <laughs> oh, cuddled with the kids. And it, 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 in life, every once in a while, don't you think you're lucky to be touched by one special person? And this little girl was my That's angel. Um, and I think one of the reasons, Tom, is that Blythe was the same age. And as you held true. Molly and as you spoke with her, you were thinking all this time, this could be our daughter going through this. This is the thing about this horrible disease. Um, it's always somebody's son. It's always somebody's daughter. You know, if it's a child, uh, uh, it, it feels almost worse than it does with uh, with mm -hmm. a mature person. It that, shouldn't be happening no. to children. And Molly, Molly's cancer was a sarcoma. So uh, when we first met Molly, she had just lost her hair. You know, it was early in the in the cancer, and she still had both legs, and so. She learned to ski with Tom, our son, and we just fell in love with this little girl. And I did the story for Good Morning America, and Molly was featured. And the next year, we remember, we decided as a family to volunteer. Mm -hmm. So we, we went back to Colorado, this time not working. And they had taken off Molly's right leg with the sarcoma. And that's actually when Tom learned to ski as an amputee himself to share with Molly. And then the third year, we went back again. And they had taken Molly's other leg. And uh, I, do you remember the dance? I remember the dance uh, so vividly. Yeah. It's right before my eyes. We, we had, they had the little party after the day of skiing. Everybody came in for pizza and, and whatever drinks and, and uh, chocolate chip cookies all these children in there celebrating their wonderful day. And Molly was sitting at the table next to me, and she tapped you on the hand <laughs> yeah. and shoulder and said, with her Tom, little Texas I want to dance. Yeah, with her little dance. Texas accent. Will you dance with me? Yeah. She said, Tom, would you dance with me? And I said, and I'll never forget, I don't know why I said it. I said, well, Molly, I don't think a blind guy and a girl with no legs should be doing that. She said, no. She said, you just pick me up, and I'll drive you like a Big Mac truck. <laughs> <laughs> she did. And we sort of waddled around the room. And we came back, and Molly guided me, talking to me, guided me back to the mm -hmm. chairs. And I put mm -hmm. her down, yeah. draw, lifted her, and put her down on the chair. And I sat down next to her, and she, she took a big sigh. And I said, Molly, are you, are you okay? And she said, well, yeah, but I'm tired. I said, well, do you want to go back to the to the dormitory, would you like to rest? No, she said, I just haven't been sleeping. And I said, well, how come? She said, well, I've been having dreams. I said, well, what kind of dreams, Molly? And she said, well, she said, the angels have come to see me. And I said, really, did they say anything? And this beautiful little 11-year-old girl 
said, uh, yeah, she said, uh, they told me I'd be with them very soon. And she died three weeks later. In death, Molly was going to profoundly change our lives because mm -hmm. we came home and I remember saying to you, I'm going to write the definitive book on childhood cancers called A Short Life Well Lived. And every single thing about that novel, the writing of the novel, was, the, I, I, there's no doubt about it, was God-inspired. Yeah, I mean, you, you saw it. I, 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 I wrote, once I started to write, I wrote that book within, what, two months, three yeah, months? Yeah, yeah. Because the, I, there, there are sections in that work, I don't think I wrote them. Yeah. I mean, I think either Molly wrote them or it they were. It just came through you. It really came through you, Tom. It did. It felt as if Molly was writing for me.